record consisting of 28 victories without a loss including 15 knockouts and he has one draw ladies and gentlemen from the land down under sydney australia here is the ibf number one ranked challenger in the world the undefeated glenn conga kelly most outstanding boxer of the 1988 Olympics and since turning professional he has won four world titles with a record that stands at 45 victories including 36 knockouts with only one loss by disqualification avenged by a first round knockout he is universally acclaimed as the very best boxer in the world for the past decade from Pensacola Florida presenting a former middleweight, former super middleweight, and two-time light heavyweight champion, the reigning, defending, undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. More consistent tempo fighting this guy. This guy likes to fight in spots. Very much reluctant, and if Roy fights his normal style of laid back, it could be a boring fight. You see the size and strength of Kelly. This for Jones is like hitting a brick wall compared to some of his previous opponents. The willowy Richard Hall, for instance. Roy Jones' skill and speed would neutralize all of the supposed advantages of Kelly has. And certainly from that range, Kelly won't be able to bother him much. No, Kelly, his basic fundamentals are bad. When he misses a punch, his right leg is all up in there. And once Roy sets the tempo up a little faster, it's going to be just a matter of time. If Kelly really wanted to compete with Jones, wouldn't he, Emmanuel, have to step right up into his chest? Yes, he would, but it's not his nature. He's just the opposite of Jeff Finish. Mentally, physically, and talent-wise. With dazzling speed, Roy Jones. Usually starts cautiously in round one and tries to get a look at his opponent, what he's going to do before he begins to develop more of the arsenal. So many different things. Looping uppercut. And again, the left hook. Kelly has dropped his right hand every time Jones has started with a left hook. It's just about a time. I think Roy's going to put on one of his better performances tonight. He's got the perfect opponent in front of him. out of 22 in power shots looks like he's a little more interested in a knockout tonight than yes. has generally been the case i'm very impressed with jones tonight he's fighting a very good fight i think he's mixing up his attack doing a variety of things and kelly is the perfect opponent for him tonight and you heard jeff fennick in the corner pleading with his fighter to throw punches so kelly comes out and tries to attack but as you can see one punch at a time and slow at that and once he, once he starts throwing punches, it's just a matter of time before he's going to get caught. The only reason he survived this long is because he hasn't been throwing punches. But he tried to throw a punch at the end of round two. Jones came close to showing us. Yes, and uppercut. He never knew where Jones was going to punch from. Jones is mixing up his attack so much. Overhand right, right. And that's the most spirited effort Kelly has made to actually get at Jones. And he lands a right hand to the body. And Jones with a right cross flush. He put he knocks you down. Glenn, we can't stop and start. Let's put the pressure on him, Glenn. Uh -huh. Glenn, what's the worst case scenario? Okay, well, then let's do it then. Let's go for it, son. Let's not give him a chance. Let's not, let, let's not just let him hit us when he wants to. Make him fight us. If he's going to hit us, if he's going to knock us down, make him fight for it. Come on, quick, go 
throws the punches in there. Don't say this is to me no more, Sam. We can't win without punches. I know you are, but you can do it. Glenn, I've seen you to do it all over right here. Was there, but you've stopped it. Take the punches from out in that room in there and bring them in here. Bring them here, Sam. I can hit him hard this round. We want this round. Come on, Glenn. There's the knockdown, and as you say, a leaping yeah, left yes. uppercut. Anticipation of where he was going to hold his hands defensively, Roy shot the left uppercut. Round four begins. Roy Jones tremendously dominant in the first three rounds. Harold, what's the score? Okay, Jim, three rounds to nothing. 30 to 26, Roy Jones Jr. Jimmy could have just as easily been another 10 8 round in his second round because Roy staggered himself badly. But so far, showing us all the tricks, the, the leaping shots, the step to the right, the bobbing and weaving, the feints. It's incredible. Roy Jones Jr. putting on a show. You heard Jeff Phoenix campaign between rounds to get Kelly. To something That's right. Him. Well, Kelly gave us about 20 seconds of it. There's some want to there. It's just that he's slow. He comes in, and even to the point where if he gets hit with a punch, sometimes he may appear to be staggered or go down. It's just because of such bad balance and coordination that he has. Roy throwing a jab. He'll spot the jab from time to time. Fight in a conventional style as he did there. It's against bad balance of coordination on the part of Kelly that makes him up here. Jab. His length and he used his height very well. In the end time, he had that very sneaky right hand that he, you never saw. He was not necessarily a hard right hand puncher, but you never saw the right hand. He was one of the best guys that were deceiving the right hand. But he would have been a big problem. Who would have countered him? Well, it's really difficult. Roy hasn't had that much of a challenge, and a lot is because of the, the talent that he has, and at the time that he, in the division. But I think that uh, Thomas would have been a big, big question. He, he, even Benito is one of the best counter punchers in the business. Could not counter Thomas Jones. Well. Here we go. And you look at this blinding speed and natural instincts of Roy Jones. It would have been an amazing fight to have solved. Oh, Roy Jones and Sugar Ray Leonard. That would have been Roy Jones and Marvin Hagler. We know what he is, but let me tell you something. Do you want to hit him? Do you want to hit him? Well, let's get closer to hit him. You get him to do the He's got two teams in his pocket, mate. Come over with the right hand. If you miss with the right hand, come back with the left hand. Put him together, son. You're not tired. Come on, Johnny. Come on, Johnny. Get him, I'll show you what happens. More action from round five. Jones with a barrage of right hands after a leaping left. It's very hard to fight a guy who's defensive-minded almost 90% of the way. In case you've just joined us, this is the second half of our unique Undisputed Champions doubleheader on HBO tonight. Earlier in Reading, Pennsylvania, when all 60 now at a weight limit of 175, Jones tries to defend his undisputed light heavyweight championship and is doing so with routine success against Glenn Kelly of Australia. And down goes Kelly on a body shot. Wicked body shot. Four, five, six, seven. Kelly's corner screaming hey, at referee okay. Max Parker Jr. that they thought the punch was low. I thought it was right on the... No, it was not low to my knowledge. A mistake. I thought it was illegal. Right, right on the belt line. Jones comes back with two left hooks to the head. Kelly's guard is way low because Jones has hurt him badly to the body. Could have not done it a third. Chip in his sixth round, Roy Jones Jr. punk run Kelly with about three or four real good left hooks to, to the body. And then when he finds sooner or later, for your talent will not carry you there because of the style of the opponent or whatever. Shane like, Mosley learned that last Saturday night. <laughs> you know, that's pretty amazing because between rounds, Alton Merkerson, Roy Jones' hand-picked trainer from Pensacola, asked him to go ahead and get the knockout and said, we've got somewhere else to go. I don't know where else they have to go, but they can go now. They can go. 